On the southeast coast of Kent sits the town of Folkestone. It's home to a regenerated harbour and cutting edge art scene, but it also contains some of the most deprived areas of the UK. For patient David Horton, finding the right practice to care for him in his area was of utmost importance. I've got type two diabetes. Um, I've been struggling with it. It's progressively got worse um, since I was diagnosed. Um, but when I, I, I went to Folkestone East Family Practice, uh, Dr Yeoman there has like, brought it under control and we've actually seen improvements. But now, Folkestone East Family Practice is closing its doors. With increasing patient demand and too few GPs, the practice has no option but to hand back the keys. The events that led up to the closure of the practice were a realisation that we were struggling to cope with the volume of patients. We took the decision on the basis of um, patient safety really. We were being too stretched and uh, the pressure on the doctors was quite intense and that reflected across the practice as a whole. For its patients, the past few months have been a worrying time. David has already seen a downward turn in his health. Just in that short space of time, my blood pressure, which was under control, which is like linked to uh, diabetes problems as well, has now risen. It's now up to 177, so it's, um, things do seem to be going backwards as it was. With long-term difficulties in recruiting GPs, the situation is getting worse for practices. Dr Adenwa Chukwu is currently training as a GP at Guildhall Surgery. GP has sort of been looked down on, I'd say. No one sort of wants to do GP. <laughs> so when I'm speaking to people and like, oh, what do you want to do? What are you thinking about applying to? And I say GP, they're like, oh, why? So GP is seen as the backup plan. This shortage of GPs is a national crisis, but in towns like Folkestone, it's felt even more acutely. So the problem is a problem of the town. There's been a historical problem with bringing doctors into the area. Places like Canterbury, Oxford, more affluent areas seem to attract GPs far easier. Um, areas that are full of deprivation, uh, coastal towns up down the country seem to have the opposite problem. Practice manager Tina Byrne claims that unsuitable practice premises are also discouraging GPs from working in the area. This practice is an old building, it's in the most deprived area of Folkestone, it's one of the most deprived practices across the UK. What do we have that will entice a doctor here? I mean, obviously a new build would be part of that. Who doesn't want to work in a nice building that's fit for purpose, as opposed to being kicked out of your room because someone else needs to use it um, in an emergency, that type of scenario. That It's not enticing for a GP. Tina says the premises cannot accommodate the increased volume of patients that they will be faced with when Folkestone East closes its doors. I mean, the issues that we're having at the moment, before we actually take on any of the extra patients, is the lack of space. So, you know, the, the, the size of the waiting room, it was built originally when we had 3,000 patients, and now we're at 8,000, and we're likely to be at 9,000 plus with those new patients coming in. So space is difficult down there. With so many patients to look after, there's a growing risk that doctors will burn out and make mistakes. Dr. Kasim Mahmood is one of those concerned. Obviously, with the closure of folks to practice, practice, uh, it has got a domino effect on all the practices because that 4,700 patient needs to be um, now allocated to the current practices and we are concerned that we are already very much stressed in our own surgeries um, and any more patient which is coming to us we will not be able to provide very safe and effective services. There's nothing actually on paper that says what's a safe level for GPs to actually maintain their lists at. Not for the sake of the doctor and making their life easy, but for the sake of the safety of the patients. Practice managers and GPs across Folkestone say that attracting GPs to the area and improving primary care is the only way to reduce hospital admissions and emergency department waiting times. The best investment you can make is in GPs. General practice is the place where most people go and yet it's taking a reducing share of NHS spending. and that has got to be wrong. I think MPs would do well to come in and actually come in on a Monday morning at Hopper State in the morning and see how crazy it is downstairs on reception and see how busy GPs are and actually spend a day in a practice and just see how much work there is and how stressful the job is. The health service is increasingly reliant on the goodwill and commitment of its staff. Despite the stress of dealing with long patient lists, 
Ada still has a passion for general practice. I know everyone sort of says, oh, GP training is boring and you're not doing much, you're just sitting by the desk. But you see so many things and you can help in so many ways. So far, I've loved working here. The staff have been fantastic and it's that zeal that they have that has made me feel like, OK, I think even though I'll get stressed, I know that the staff that I would work with would be helpful. So I know I would leave home every day happy. And as far as the GP crisis in Folkestone goes, for David, the solution to holding on to more trainees like Ada is clear. There seems to be a need for the levelling of the playing field. So doctors don't make a black and white decision when they're, they're, they're choosing their career, when they're qualifying, that they're not going to say, well, that's a lot easier for me. They get more funding, there's more wages, there's less patients per, per GP. Oh, it's easy, I'm going to go there. We need places like Folkestone where, let's face it, poor areas are not as healthy as uh, more affluent areas. The GPs need to be encouraged, so if that means offering them more wages, uh, less patients per, per GP and more funding overall, that's what we need to do.